I was going to talk about specifically you had, um, you know, some pretty full on health issues. And I was curious, w were there any kind of, um, any of your, any of the chapters in your book that helped you get through that kind of traumatic time? Well, I wrote the last book almost entirely when I was, I was so ill, I could barely make it to the typewriter. Yeah. So the computer. And so, but it was, it's, look, man, when you're in the depths of, of catastrophe, you have the support and love of your family, if you're fortunate, and your friends. And I had no shortage of that, thank God. But I was writing this book and, you know, I wanted to write it. And, and it, as far as I was concerned, it was important that I do it. And um, that gave me something to live for mm. continually. And you need something meaningful to set against suffering. That's what you have to set against suffering, not happiness. Sometimes you don't have, that's not an option sometimes. Happiness is like, no, I, I don't think I had any happiness at all for three years, pretty much. And what is- it was dire. Well, my wife, she, she spent a year hovering on the brink of death in a variety of different ways. Before that, my daughter had catastrophic health problems, which have mostly resolved. And then I got extremely ill. So we've been in, and at the same time, we were facing social pressure of like an unparalleled magnitude, people mm. trying to, you know, bring this enterprise to a halt, I suppose. If that's probably the right way yeah. to think about it. Most of that time, I was hoping that I would die. I've been grateful for the good things that have happened to me, but I don't think I was grateful enough before just for mundane normality, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you think you don't have everything you could have, and, and perhaps that's true, but if you can sit down and breathe, there's lots of people who don't have that. Yeah. And I read somewhere that you, you couldn't even listen to music. Oh, or... no. No, no. Why, and just, why, why is well, that? Well, no, I had no positive emotion at all, and, and it was too sensory. Like, I was very sensitive to anything that was, any sensory input at all. I mean, Last year, when I was in Florida, I I would get up at about eight in the morning because I couldn't sleep anymore, and then I would I was pretty much on the couch till three. But I had to have ear earplugs in and uh, like a covering over my eyes. That at that point, I could still lay down, so I I could well I wasn't resting, but I at least wasn't moving. So I'm curious with you. Do you remember the first song that you were able to listen to when you came out of your illness? I think it was probably something by Arcade Fire. Right. So I really like Arcade Fire. I think they're great. Yeah. Um, and what so, was that? That must have just been to be able to... Oh, man, it was such a relief. And now I've been listening to music like mad. My wife and I, we spend about five hours a week dancing upstairs in our... That's all right. Like for a long time, two years, every evening I spent with her, I thought would probably be the last one. Yeah. So the fact that that's not the case anymore and that we can listen to music. And I have these long playlists that I've been curating for years that we have an oldies romance playlist that's jazz singers from pretty much the 20s through the 50s, some 60s stuff. I'm curious as well, you know, when you're kind of cur cur curating these kind of like playlists, are you able to be in the zone or are you are you watching her reaction to the music? Because that's always the thing I Well, I with. tend to put the playlist together and then our rule is she has veto power. And so, you know, if I, there's a song on there that she doesn't want to listen to repeatedly when we're driving in our car or whatever, then I'll take it off. And, yeah. And she is very good at deciding when something shouldn't be around anymore and getting rid of it. Yeah. So, which was always terrifying, by the way, to our children when they had friends come over because ha, when they first come over, We'd tell them, we're really happy that you're here, you know, and you're welcome. And we meant it. I think teenagers are pretty funny with their caustic sense of humor and their proclivity to misbehave. But the second part of the message was, but, but if you do anything stupid and we never have to see you again, that actually isn't a problem for us. It's, hang on, so, hang on. Is that how you would greet them with that? Yes. That is fucking terrifying. Yeah, well, it was so, so funny, though, because they were terrified of me when they first came over, which was yeah. a good thing. But after they'd been over five times, they weren't terrified of me. Of course. But they were definitely terrified of Tammy. Right. So, yeah, because she, she has a stronger spine than me in many ways. Because I'm a very, as it turns out, I'm a very agreeable person. I don't like conflict at all.